Today in this chapter, we are going to be chatting about all the different papers that are available to you to test your watercolours on. They come in lots of different formats, and the only way to find out which one you like the best is to try them all. So we're going to be talking about all the different papers that are out there for you to try. And through experimentation, you can find which ones work the best for you. So there are lots of different formats that paper come in, right? You've got your sketchbooks, which are an amazing way to start out and great for taking notes because you can just tuck it in your bag and go. So lots of different formats. You can get like a spiral bound one or one that's glued in like this. And I just like to have it on hand for all my ideas. Maybe it's colours that work for you, little bits and bobs that inspire you. They're just such a good journal to have. This is just a slightly bigger version of this one. And they come with different paper types in them. So the medium that you're working in will be different on different papers. If you go into an art store, you might see those giant um, drawers and in them there are all these different papers and they've got different weights and that's quite intimidating. You don't really need to worry about that. All you need to know is the bigger the number, the heavier the gauge of paper. I use a lot of this, which is 90 pounds, and I use it because I like the price point and I still love the surface of it and the material and I'm not intimidated to use it. If I'm doing a big fancy painting, then I'll probably use 300. We need to consider when we're painting on paper how water will affect the paper. So a great format to stop your paper from buckling is a glued pad. So it's glued all the way around the outside and it means that you can use as much water as you want and it won't buckle. And then once it's dry, you can just pull it off or slice it off of this pad. Something that we're probably all familiar with and you see nearly everywhere you go is a sketchbook pad and it's just glued at one end. Sometimes I like to pull this off and just tape it because sometimes it can still buckle a little bit. So I usually like to pull this off if I'm using a lot of water. But if you're just doing a few tests, you can just leave it in here, that's fine. And the paper that I use the most, because I like to paint quite big, is loose sheets of paper. And with loose sheets of paper, you really do have to tape them down because of the buckling that happens. So let me tell you how I stretch my paper. So all you need is your board, and the reason I like to use a board rather than an easel is because I use a lot of water and it gets very drippy. If I had an easel that was at an angle, most of my painting would just end up on the floor. So I am not a particularly delicate painter, let's just say, and I like to splash out. So I love to have a flat surface. So I've got my board here and this is just masonite that's cut down from a DIY store. And I've got my masking tape. You can use painter's tape. You can use any tape you want. This is just my personal preference. So I will just tape the outside of my paper. And I make sure that I've got enough tape just covering the outside. So it attaches to the board and still has some on the paper itself. There we go. And then you want to make sure it's nice and secure. Just run your fingers over the top so there are no air bubbles because we're going to use water to sort of vacuum seal this paper to the board so that it doesn't buckle once it's dried. I'm going to use my trusty sponge brush for this and what we're going to do is just dip it in the water, get it nice and saturated. You can use a paintbrush too or you could use a spray bottle but you really want something that's going to just cover the paper nicely with water. Nice even coating. 
So what I like to do is go back and forth along the paper. So I do vertical stripes and then I go horizontally across. And if you're not sure if you've covered the whole of your paper, just have a little look to the side again. Mine's still a little bit dry, so I'm gonna just add in a bit more. You don't want it to be pooling. You want it to just be a nice, even coat of water. So it glistens, but it's not pooling anywhere. There we go. And then typically, I'll use a hairdryer, because I'm impatient. And I just will use that hairdryer to dry this off. And what happens is all the water is absorbing into the fibers of the paper and they expand. And then as it dries, they retract and you get a lovely piece of flat paper. So it's vacuum sealed to my piece of board. Next up, we're going to go through some of the papers that I use the most and we'll look at the different textural surfaces that they have. This is a fun experiment to try at home and to see how one colour interacts with loads of different surfaces of paper. I've just laid out some different papers for us to test. Up the top, I've got cold press rough paper and that's got a lot of texture to it. If you run your finger over it, you'll be able to tell that's the roughest one and it's the heaviest of all the papers. Underneath it, we've got a lovely smooth hot press. Below that, we've got a thin piece of paper, newsprint, nice and cheap. Underneath that, we've got Chinese rice paper, which is quite fibrous. You can see that it looks almost handmade. And right at the bottom, we've got household paper towel. You never know which surface paper you're going to enjoy painting on the most. I've tried them all. In fact, I once did a whole collection for a fashion house painting the print design onto paper towel. Nobody knew but me. It looked great in the end. You just never know what's going to work out. I'm going to use this painter's decorating brush just from a DIY store, just picked it up, super cheap. And I'm going to dip into some ink and we're going to bung it down here and see what happens. I have not done this before either, so who knows? We'll see. We'll find out. So I'm just going to dip in there. So starting at the top on our rough paper. We're going to just do one stripe down. Oh, I like that colour. Tasty. That's really nice. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to put that down. Maybe I'll just do one more stripe next to it for funsies, but I'm going to just open up my brush. So I'm going to just see if I can give that brush a little bit more texture by opening it up. Ready? Oh yeah, now we see that whole brush mark. So this is nice because you can see how, if you're using a bit of a drier brush, how that might come out. So cool. You can see some of them just absorbed in super fast. Some of them are showing the texture through like this Chinese rice paper is really showing those lovely fibers inside. Even the newsprint has done some lovely things there. This is a fun experiment to try at home and to see how one color interacts with loads of different surfaces of paper. If you really enjoyed this little experiment, you could always do much bigger pieces of paper and you could try different brushes and different mediums and see how they interact with each other, on top of each other, next to each other. Honestly, the sky is the limit. So just have fun with this little experiment and see what happens. I often go into the art store and see what's on sale or just look for stuff that I've no idea what it is and 
buy it and then try it. And that's what I'm going to do now. I found this uh, Japanese calligraphy paper, which I've never tried before. So I figured um, what better time to try it than with you all. So I've got this board here and I'm going to just loosely tape it. I'm not going to stretch this because it's so thin that it's just not worth it. But I am going to just secure it with a little bit of tape so it doesn't move around on me. That should do it there. And I really just want to see how it absorbs the ink. And I'm just going to use a different brush. I'm just going to actually use water to begin with. I saw this recently for a kindergarten class. They had just paper, sort of similar to this really thin paper, and they just used water to create marks on it. And I thought, well, that's genius, you know? It will dry out and they can use it again. So it's kind of fun. It sure does take the pressure off using any, any um, paint. <laughs> so I'm going to add in a little bit of ink now as well and just see how it absorbs. It's really smooth. Oh, it's lovely actually. Just really allows the brush to flow across the surface. And it's definitely doing a little bit of bleeding, kind of what you'd expect from a thin piece of paper. It's sort of just bleeding out and giving these little sort of rougher edges. Let's see if I use the side of the brush so it's drier. Oh, see, it's Gorgeous, picking up some tonality in there. So nice. But that was like just a fun little example of going in and trying something new. I love how this looks. I think it's super delicate. It would be lovely for me thinking about the flowers that I paint. Maybe I'd do something really wispy and light, like buttercups or something. So I really enjoyed just playing around on this little piece of paper here. I'd like to show you some examples of work that I've done on different papers, like more finished kind of things, so you can maybe see beyond the stripe of colour how things sit on top of those papers. Ah, so first up, sometimes I like to do my sketches on the kind of paper that you put into a printer, you know, just the dead basic blocks of paper that you can get. And it does wrinkle a little bit, but I quite like that and like I, I have a bit of a thing for wrinkly paper and like sound <laughs> and so I really like wrinkly paper and I might chop this up and just stick it into my sketchbook. Um, but yeah, never discount the paper that's just like in the back of a drawer, you know, I use it all the time. This one here is our 90 pound-ish watercolour paper. It's got that slightly rough finish, but it's not super rough. It's just got a little bit of texture. Really nice for doing ink work. This is just our pad of paper. It's a watercolour paper. It's got a tiny, tiny bit of texture on it, but it's actually quite smooth. And it's about 200 GSM, so that's that medium weight paper. Love this for using um, gouache. This is my favourite paper for painting with gouache because it's quite a smooth surface. And then this is a hot press, so it's got that smooth finish. And you can see, you know, it, it sucked in the ink really, really fast, which meant it shows all these li different marks that the brush left. And each brush stroke on watercolour paper, you just get more time and you get less of that textural kind of look going on. It's much smoother. And then over here is that lovely, fine, fibrous, sort of handmade feeling Chinese rice paper. It bleeds beautifully and it's got that really nice crinkle sound again. So that's just a few examples of different papers that I've used. There are definitely no rules with which paper to use. Use as many as you can get your hands on and just have a go at all of them. 
stick them together if you want, chop them up. You know, the sky is really the limit and it's all about experimenting with anything that you can find. So amongst all the papers that are out there to you, you're gonna find the ones that you love the most. Again, you just gotta go out there and try them. Whether it's this lovely lightweight, crinkly Chinese rice paper or good old sketchbook paper. There's definitely gonna be one or two out there for you and I'm excited for you to try them all.